Welcome back everyone, I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and we're back with another video. Another Pathfinder Bytes, it was a little disrupted because last week we had the remaster thing called out of nowhere. And on top of that, I'm going to add that some things that the cleric will change due to the remaster. So while this Pathfinder Bytes is going to cover what I think is still going to be a lot of the core of what makes a cleric a cleric, it might be subject to change, and if enough of it does, I'll do a catch-up video a little bit later. But this is the Pathfinder Bytes video. I'm going to try to get across to you what is a cleric in 10 minutes or less, or, you know, my closest approximation as we saw with Champion. Anyway, let's begin. So, what is a cleric? A cleric is the best healer in the game, bar none. They just have access to the biggest heals and have a lot easier access to them, and some very easy ways to even get infinite healing between combats same as the champion so you know a very powerful class indeed not only that but they are a divine spellcaster who unlike wizards or witches have access to their whole spell list at any time now they are prepared so you do need to prepare your each and of each of your individual slots but thanks to your divine font which is a huge part of your class you don't even need to worry about preparing healing spells your divine font gives you an, a number of healing spells at your highest spell level. So if you get up to fifth level spells, you get additional spell slots of fifth level equal to your charisma modifier plus one. So even if you add a couple points into your charisma, you still get a fair amount of really good healing, which is very good. And you can prepare any spells that you have access to. So anything that isn't uncommon or rare, you can automatically prepare at the beginning of the days. And if you find an uncommon or rare spell, well, that can now be prepared for as per usual. You don't need to find anything. You don't need to learn any spells. You just have access to your whole spell list, which makes the divine casters, especially the cleric, very, very powerful. Not only that, but because you're a divine character and many of your feats do apply to this, you are the biggest anti-evil slash anti-unholy or even anti-holy or anti-good in the game. They have lots of feats or abilities that specifically target creatures anathema or opposite to your alignment, whatever that may be, depending on the time you're watching this video. And you can do use your healing as well. If you are in a group of undead party members, the harm spell does the same thing as the heal spell for undead. So it doesn't matter what your alignment is or how you're doing it. Clerics are the perfect healers slash anathema to those who directly oppose them, making them incredibly powerful. So the specific things that clerics need to worry about are what deity they're selecting, because this will determine what anathemas they need to follow, which is going to be a very important, especially in the remaster, as they might be adding more to the individual gods. And on top of that, you get to learn a specific skill based on the deity that you pursue and even have additional spells added to your spell list that are not normally available to divine casters. On top of all this, if you go the cloistered cleric route, which we'll get to here in a moment, you'll get access to their domain, one of their domains for your domain initiate, which gives you a focus spell. And many of the domain ones are pretty powerful. So it's very important you select a god that has many of the features skill-wise, spell-wise, in focus spell-wise that suit how you want to play the game and, of course, have anathema that you don't wish to commit. So that's very important. The doctrine I'm, I mentioned earlier, the cloister cleric, is between cloistered or war priest. Whether you want to be a pure, squishy spellcaster who can't wear anything more than traveling clothes and who gets their spell casting sooner and get up to legendary spell casting, or the war priest who gets access to the shield block feet, get trained in uh, light and medium armor, and as well get their weapon proficiencies sooner than their cloistered counterparts, though all this at the cost of not being able to eventually become legendary in spell casting. Now, that's actually not a big deal because there are many ways to play a cleric that don't require your spellcasting proficiency at all. Using heroism, healing, all this kind of stuff, none of these require a higher spell attack or spell DC. So if you rather have more armor and the ability to use shields, War Priest might be the way to go. If you prefer spellcasting and focus purely on your ability to affect enemies with your spells, you might want to go Cloistered. 
So let's talk a little bit more about divine casting as we're wrapping up things here. Divine spells, particularly, are more focused on buffing, healing, and anti-anathema kind of spells. It's really hard to know exactly how this is all going to work due to the remaster coming up. I'm just going to say from now on that deal holy or unholy damage, which will affect certain enemies of some types. But until that stuff comes out, just know that clerics predominantly deal in alignment damage, so they deal damage to those who oppose their alignment. Chaotic to lawful, good to evil, yada yada yada. Cantrip wise, the divine casters struggle a little bit. They don't have the tried and true electric arc or any of the really good cantrip spells that some of the other traditions get access to. They really struggle, and as of right now, Divine Lance is probably one of the worst spells in the game as far as cantrip attack spells. You get Daze, which is okay, but not super great. Though, I will say, you do get access to Guidance, which is one of the best cantrips in the game, as it gives you an easy plus one circumstance bonus or status. Status bonus to an attack roll, perception check, saving throw, or skill check the target makes before the end of the turn as to you or an ally. Overall, really good and probably one of the best cantrips in the game as it's just a free plus one. Here you go, single action, not bad. But just know that attacking wise, your cantrips, you're going to suffer a little bit. And that's unfortunate. Hopefully when the new cleric stuff comes out, the remaster will provide some better attacking for the divine spell list because it really needs it. All right, finally, some tips and tricks I would have for clerics and then we'll wrap this video up. So being a cleric, you're not only a healer, you get bonus spell slots specifically for your healing spells or your harm spells if you have a deity that provides harm, meaning you could be a high damaging character if that's the way you want to go. But these bonus slots that you can put your healing allow you to use your other spell slots for other things like buffing or using spells, a variety of different methods of gameplay. So do not feel that when you're the cleric, you're the automatic healer. You can be a good healer and just a strong spellcaster all in one just by grace of your divine font, which is really, really good. But on top of that, damage mitigation is just as important as healing. The more you can affect enemies with things like Ray of Enfeeblement that make them less likely to hit and do less damage, or even the Darkness spell, which can hide your allies or blind the enemies, can be good ways of negating some of the damage. So when you're out on the battlefield, do not look for just healing and what to heal next. Look for ways to mitigate damage as well. You have a much funner time playing the game, and it'll give you a new perspective on how to work on the battlefield. Rather than just being a reactive healer, you can be a preemptive damage, ne damage negator. Another thing that is important to remember as well, War Priest does not mean Marshal. You do not suddenly become a Marshal character because you are a War Priest. The War Priest's job, and it's going to get reworked a little bit in the remaster, so I don't know exactly how much of this will stay relevant, but the war, the war priest's job is to be out on the front lines of battle. They have the armor, they have shield block, they get a decent amount of HP as well, matching some of the martial classes out there, and they don't need to worry about using their spells effectively, as they can use spells like heroism, bless, bane, so many spells that don't really require, well, bane, I guess, requires a save DC from the enemy, but Bless doesn't, and it boosts your allies as well. So there's a lot you can do, and you can be right on the front line of combat. It also allows you to play a tank, because shield block is a really good feat, and it just allows you to negate damage as long as you're maintaining your shields, which you can easily do. So just remember, when you're playing a war priest, you're not a marshal. Your job is not to do martial damage. Your job is to be on the front line and do buffing damage. And when you have the opportunity, give a good bonk with your with your mace, whether you hit or not. It's not the reason why you're there. If that's what you want to do, I recommend playing something like the Magus, who is a lot better as a martial caster than the War Priest. The War Priest is a paragon of healing and benefit, or even a, a bane to their enemies, depending on the kind of spells you select. So, you know, something that is very important to keep in mind. And that's gonna be it for this Pathfinder Bites. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope I kept it under 10 minutes. 
and let me know how you liked it down below in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.